I have a song for you. Are you ready? Here it comes. Sound familiar? Yeah, that's been happening this week. Here it comes. Boom. And the whole world hit the cray button this week. I mean, are you kidding me? What a week. I've been praying for you guys. It's a week that we'll probably never forget. And I was thinking about what's happened this week. I mean, wow, so much stuff. But here's one of the things that I think has happened to every one of us. Our expectations of what should be happening, of what's normal, have just been shattered. Let me tell you what I mean. If you're in middle school, your expectation right now might be, hey, in a, another not too long, couple weeks, mid-April, we're going down to Jekyll Island on the expedition. If you're in high school and you're a servant leader, your expectation might have been getting ready to do everything down there. If you're a senior, your expectation is, this is my senior year. All these things are supposed to happen just so. And you know what? <laughs> None of that's happening. I mean, think about it. Last week, we had parents at Living Science who were being asked, oh, please don't come back to work until you're clear. And this week, everybody's being told, whoa, don't come back for a couple of weeks. We don't want you to come to the office. Let's let this whole thing play out. Nothing, nothing is the same as it was a week ago. Um, wow. And, you know, as I've been thinking about this and praying about this and studying the Word, there's a couple things I just wanted to share with you. I'm going to share three or four points and talk about a great passage of Scripture we heard uh, as part of an online church community today. So here's the first thing. Um, I have great news for you. You are not alone in this. Everybody is dealing with this. And here's why that's kind of cool. Last week, we kind of were alone. I, I mean, Living Science was the first school in the whole country that had someone who tested positive. There was no rule book. Everyone was trying to figure out what do you do with that. This week, everybody is dealing with all of this stuff. Now, here's the good news. You're about a week ahead of most people, which means you have learned some things that they haven't figured out yet. So my first thought is I'd encourage you, share those with people. Be an encouragement as you're looking for those opportunities that we talked about last week. Here's my second thought. Everything, point number two, everything just changed in one week. It totally changed. And my question is, is that bad? Maybe, maybe not. Let me give you an example. Um, uh, the company I work for, they, they bring lunch in, which is amazing. And on Fridays, we bring in Chick-fil-A. Fridays are Chick-fil-A Fridays, which who doesn't love that? You get up, you're kind of happy. I will, I'll tell you what, I stroll into the office. I might even be uh, known to sing uh, you know, a little song, Chick-fil-A. I could eat it seven times a day. I mean, who couldn't, right? It's Chick-fil-A. So what if I walked in one Friday and they said, oh, by the way, no Chick-fil-A today. What? Are you kidding? No Chick-fil-A today. I mean, goodness me, turmoil. I love my Chick-fil-A on Fridays. And while I'm down and in the muck and the mire and just really feeling sorry for myself, notice this is all about me, I don't even ask or think about what the alternative could be until maybe a couple hours later someone comes up and says, we have great news for you, right? You are getting the best beef brisket you have ever had in your life. Yes, that's right. Mr. Kevin's been up smoking all night long on his smoker, and he has just worked magic with meat. And we are now, instead of Chick-fil-A Friday, we are going to have Big Red's Barbecue Friday. Oh, yes, hallelujah. See, I know all of you who have had that. You can just taste that right now. And right now, you're all like, hey, Chick-fil-A is good. Beef brisket, pulled pork, off of Mr. Kevin's smoker. Oh. That's another world, and that's my point. What if something's about to happen that is way better than what has been going on, than what was the norm? Well, we got to make sure we don't miss the opportunity to be part of what God's doing here. And you know, here's here's my third idea. So my first idea is you're not alone. My second idea is everything has changed. That might not be bad. My third idea is this: routine 
is never epic. Routine, having things go the way you expect them, the same way, the way they always have, that's never epic. No matter how excited you might have been about, oh, I was looking forward to. Maybe changing the routine is where the epic happens. I want you to watch this video here. This is a video from a missions trip Elena just got back from in Jamaica. I want you to watch it. I might even, if I can figure out how to do this, I'm going to play it twice. Pay attention to the cow, the cow that goes behind the van. Watch. Okay, <laughs> was that amazing? Did you see that? That cow didn't just stroll down the road. Now, where was this? This was a, a little mountain road up in Jamaica. The team Elena was with, they went out and they were ministering all, all day. They parked their van on the side of that road. That's all pretty normal there. Farmer bought cows down the road. That might seem weird to us. Actually pretty normal there. Here's where it got a little wild. One of those cows decided instead of going around the van on the road, he was going to go up into the woods, and did you see him? He slipped and bam, fell right into the van. I mean, oh my word. And did you hear those people in the van? I tell you, Elena told me there was one guy, he was in there, he was right up by the window, and he thought that he might be kissing a cow that day. <laughs> I got to tell you, kissing a cow is an experience no matter when you do it, but if it's coming through the window and kissing you, that's a moment you're never going to forget. <laughs> But you know, they'll talk about that forever, won't they? Epic. Epic. What if God's getting ready to do something epic? Let's talk about this passage that we heard in church this morning. Um, it's out of Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3, verses 1 to 9. I'm going to read through this real quick. One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer at 3 in the afternoon. Now a man crippled from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg for those going from those going into the temple courts. When he and Peter and John were about to enter, this guy asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him, looked straight at him, as did John, and then Peter said, look at us, hey, look at us. <laughs> so the man gave them his attention, expecting a little something, something, of course. Then Peter said, silver or gold, I don't have, but what I have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man that used to be sitting begging at the temple gate called Beautiful. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. Let's talk about this. There's so much here. I'm going to hit a couple things real quick. Um... How do you go from normal to epic? Okay, this starts out one day. Here's what I love about this. It was any day. It was just a day, one day. And you know what? One day, a couple weeks ago, we got a phone call from the Georgia Department of Public Health and everything changed. One day, Peter and John, now these are two different dudes. They're amazing guys. They both love Jesus. But when you really study who they are, how they were wired, how they were behaved, I mean, you talk about polar opposites. You've got John, an amazing you know, a little more introverted, a little more quiet, very thoughtful, a lover, loves Jesus, leans his head on Jesus' chest at the Last Supper. And then you got Peter, bold, brash, loud mouth. He loves Jesus too, whips his sword out and cuts a guy's ear off to protect Jesus. Couldn't have two more different people. Here's what's interesting. This is the first, right here, you can go look. This is the first miracle recorded in the scripture after the New Testament church started. And you got to ask yourself, okay, there's all kinds of things God's probably trying to tell us. Why does he have two people who are completely opposite? They're together serving. And I think part of the message here is our differences make us strong. We've got to put those aside in a time when the world is just coming apart at the seams, pointing fingers and blaming people and talking about differences. We need to come together, overcome our differences, and go tell people about Jesus. So I think that's amazing. Let's jump down to verse 6. After Peter said, look at us. Now the man, hey, he's like, all right, here we go. I'm going to get a little cash, right? Because that's what he was here. He was there doing. And, and I, I love this because um, Peter says, look, silver or gold I don't have. Now at this point, you've got to put yourself in, in, in the, the, the shoes, if you will, of this beggar. 
this is what he does every single day. He's over 40. We learn in Acts chapter 4. So he's probably been there 25, 30 years. And he's expecting someone's going to give him money. And they go, oh, we don't got any of that. At this point, he's probably like, okay, yeah, hey, do me a favor. Move aside. I got to get to the next person. This is how I live. And instead they go, but, I love this, but what I have I give you. And so I want to ask you, what do you have? See, this man thought he wanted and needed money. That's not what he needed. It's what he wanted. It's not what he needed. See, what he needed was he needed Jesus Christ in his life. He needed to be saved and to get up and walk. Everyone you are talking to right now, everyone around you wants this virus to go away and they want everything to go back to normal, but that's not what they need. What they need is Jesus and he's put you there to go tell them about that. And so here's my last point. Um, things are not ordinary right now. See, when, when they walked into the, the temple there, everyone noticed and they're going, wait a minute, that's the guy who used to sit out there. That was normal. That was an ordinary day. Now he's walking around and jumping. They noticed because nothing was normal. And right now, nothing's normal. The expedition is going to be different. Your senior year is going to be different. Work's going to be different for moms and dads. Just figuring stuff out is going to be different. And we need to stop saying, oh, no, it's terrible, and start saying, what if God is about to start a massive revival in our country? He's got everyone's attention. What if this is the moment? What if different is epic? What if you look back as a senior and realize that your senior year wasn't just a boring, normal senior year with all the normal stuff seniors do, going out on trips and having graduation parties and banquet and all that. What if you can look back and say your senior year was where mass evangelism started in the midst of panic? And so that's what I want to leave you with, and that's why I want to challenge you. What can you do? What's the opportunity? Remember we talked about that before you and what can you do that's epic that's going to be part of what God is doing use technology when we're being told that we got to be apart how can you use that to stay together can you try and start online prayer meetings online Bible studies use zoom and Webex and all of the technology you know better than I do use all that technology to reach people for Jesus I cannot wait to hear the stories of what your creative, inspired minds come up with, what happens with those ideas. This revival will not start in the church. It'll start with you and your friends walking in with God's peace and bringing that into the midst of panic. Here's the opportunity, guys. It's unbelievable. I'm praying for you. I love you guys a lot. And quite frankly, I'm a little hungry. I'll let talk about that amazing barbecue and brisket. I'm going to go check, see if I got some in the freezer. See ya!